Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews and have I got a rare treat for you today! It's a Mattel Jurassic World review! I know, right? But trust me, this one was just too cool not to talk about on the channel. It is of course the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex fresh off the FedEx cart from Target. Now, in the unlikely event that you have been living under a rock lately, the Hammond Collection is Mattel's replacement to the ill-fated Amber Collection. Unlike the Amber Collection, which was 6 inch scale, the Hammond Collection fits into the 3 and 3 quarter inch scale, allowing Mattel to make more highly articulated dinosaurs that will scale just fine with the standard line. In my opinion, it was an absolute winner of a move, and I am so excited for what the line holds. But of course, today, we're taking a look at the big kahuna herself. It is Rexy the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So let's get into it. First up, we do have to talk about the new Hammond Collection style packaging. And I gotta say, I really do enjoy the aesthetics that they went with. In the bottom left-hand corner, you have got the Hammond Collection logo itself with John Hammond's silhouette encased in amber. You then have the Tyrannosaurus Rex title running along the bottom, as well as a raised relief Jurassic emblem in the top right corner. Then, of course, you have got a window opening to get a peek at the toy inside. And I really do love the display. Might have done just a little bit more of an open box concept here. Maybe shrunk the logo down a bit so that you could see more of the figure. But beyond that, I am very excited for it. Then, of course, the back of the box features the sort of 3D render from Mattel along with a still image, a little bit about the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Hammond Collection logo once again. And then in the top right corner, you have got the classic Jurassic Park logo. So really, this line does feel like a celebration of everything Jurassic. An absolute love letter to both the fans and the films. One last quick note about the packaging. The sides of the box then feature a larger Hammond Collection logo on the left side. And then the right has this awesome flare lit render of the Tyrannosaurus Rex flanked by the Hammond Collection logo one more time and the Jurassic Park logo beneath. I mean, is that Jurassic or is that Jurassic? And then the top of the box has more of that container metal aesthetic as well as the logo once again. All right, now that I have given the packaging its dues, I say it is time we get this asset out of containment. And there is the T-Rex out of its cardboard prison. And as you can see, this thing is absolutely massive pushing the limits of what my review space can accommodate. But wow, is this thing ever impressive. After getting it out of the box, there was a one-time assembly. You had to pop that tail into place. After that, there is no going back. And then some time was spent working, heating the joints, and then of course just playing with it because, oh my gosh, the posability on this thing is just insanely Fun and so cool, and I cannot wait to give you guys a closer look at it. So let's go ahead and jump right in, starting as we always do, with the head. So going in for a closer look at the head of this figure, as you can see, this thing is just chalked full of scale detail, and they capture the likeness of the Jurassic Rex incredibly well. You can see the accentuated nasal ridges, the large pointed brows, the long banana-shaped teeth, and of course the yellow glass eye with the black pupil. I'll admit I'm not really the biggest fan of the glass eye because the pupil does tend to disappear on you, so you just get this yellow possessed looking eye, which isn't that great, but I can live with it. I appreciate them trying to do something different with it. A couple of other areas of interest to note. When you open the jaws, you can see that the cheeks are a soft rubber material, and the tongue is as well and can be posed up or down, which is where I prefer to keep it. But yes, I absolutely adore the head on this thing. It feels as accurate to the Stan Winston sculpture as any Mattel figure has, and the detail is just top notch. 
Moving down the length of the body, you can see that the scale detail becomes much less pronounced in favor of the leathery, wrinkly skin. You can see all these great folds of skin covering the muscle tones of the neck, as well as this nice cross-hatch skin texture adorning the areas of movement around the torso, including bunching up around the shoulder joint and the legs. This sort of leathery skin texture continues all the way down the length of the tail. Mattel did not leave a speck of this thing unattended to. They're really showing off that fine detail sculpting chops that we've seen them honing since 2018. The arms of the figure are appropriately muscled and end in the black claw tips. The thighs have some incredible muscle tones. Rexy may not have the biggest arms, but she absolutely does not skip leg day. I mean, look at those thunder thighs feeding down into those rippling calves. As you go down the ankle, you can see that classic plate scaling adorning the backs of the toes, which have the same black nails as the hands. Now let's talk paint, and there is an absolute ton on this figure, with various shades of brown lovingly applied that transition seamlessly into one another. You also have got dark dorsal striping starting at the back of the neck and continuing all the way down the tail. Look at that! You can do it, Mattel! I never doubted you! The face has that sort of eye-shadowy look around the orbits and the fenestra, as well as running along the lips. This was one area area of concern I had with the promo images. It sort of looked like this thing was wearing brown lipstick, but I will say in person, it's not nearly as bad. Then the rest of the body is this sort of caramel color with dark brown fades along the thighs and feet, as well as a lighter tan underbelly. You've also got all sorts of flecks of paint across the body and face to give it some modeling and breakup. Overall, I do think the patterning might be just a little bit too apparent, but add some mild complaint. This is, without a doubt, the best painted Mattel Rex so far and possibly ever. I don't, I don't foresee them topping this thing, do you? Now let's talk articulation. I counted an impressive 23 different points of articulation. I could have miscounted, but let's go through them one by one. First up, the jaw can open and close. Now one thing I'm not the biggest fan of with this is the fact that it's sort of double hinged, in that when you open the upper or lower jaw, it does affect the opposite points. So when you get it open to its full extent, the upper jaw sort of pops up ever so slightly. It does give you that impressive wide gape, but I would have much preferred they be on separate joints because I'm just really not the biggest fan of how the head sort of pops upward when the jaw opens. It gives it this very awkward look in my opinion, but that is a mild grievance. I usually, I'll probably just keep it sort of half open like that and be just fine. The tongue is then articulated in the mouth. You can move it up and down. I like to keep it down like I said and then going down from the head just before the base of the neck you have got a ball and socket joint so you can rotate and turn the head about like so then at the base of the neck this piece is actually rubber I was not expecting that at all you can get a twisting motion not much side to side with this one you have to rely on the next joint up for that but it does allow you to do a little bit of extra movement getting into the arms of the figure you can see that at the the shoulder joint you can rotate them forward and back and also move them sort of in and out like so. Then at the elbow you can move it forward and back. You also get the twisting motion and then the wrist can be pulled forward and back. So what I'm really excited about for this is you can get that bunny hand pose, which is kind of a staple of the original Stan Winston animatronic. Yes, we know it's not accurate, but none of Mattel's other figures kind of were able to have this bended motion. They were all kind of stuck out, kind of awkward like the classic Kenner Red Rex, but finally we are able to get a little closer to the original animatronic. Then of course the torso does have a point of articulation. You can rotate it up and down and side to side. You can't really twist this one. I would have liked to have the option to twist it, 
but not a huge deal. What is a bit grating for me is that squeak. That is not appealing at all. Oh! Now on to the legs. The thighs can be moved in and out, and then of course forward and back, and they do have their sort of stopping point at a neutral stance to sort of give it some extra stability. The knees are double jointed. You can bend them at the thigh as well as at the calf there. Then of course the ankles can be rotated. and the feet can move forward and back and be rotated as well. Then the base of the tail is on a ball and socket joint, so it can be swung around like so. Then about a quarter of the way down the tail, you have got this cutoff line between the hard plastic and the rubber bendable wire tail. This point can also be rotated, but of course the appeal here is the fact that you can bend this. It's not the best bendable wire tail, but it's a nice addition nonetheless. So yeah, that's the articulation of this figure, and all of those points allow you to get it into some truly awesome poses, either interacting with the other figures from your collection, or recreating those classic moments from the film, or both. This is the Rex fans have been waiting for, and this is exactly why. Now let's get into some measurements, bearing in mind that this is kind of dependent on the pose that you put this figure in. But in terms of the length in a fairly neutral stance, you'll see this figure comes in at a whopping near 25 inches in length or about 63.5 centimeters. Now the animatronic used in Jurassic Park was 39 feet four inches in length, which would put this figure nicely in that 118th scale. Now, as far as the height goes in that same neutral positioning, you're looking at right around eight and a quarter inches off the ground at the top of the back of the neck or roughly 21 centimeters. Now, one thing I will say about this figure is it's probably the best proportioned Rex from Mattel so far. The tail is a great length for once. Unfortunately, the feet are just way too big. They were too big in the promo images. I kind of hoped it wouldn't bother me as much in person, but yeah, they're kind of on the clown side of things, which is a bit unfortunate. I get that they do it for balance, so I can concede that point, but ah, ah, those feet were just a little smaller, just a little smaller. This would be the perfect sculpt. Getting into some size comparisons, let's start with the rest of the Hammond Collection dinosaurs so far, that of course being the Parasaurolophus, Baryonyx, and Velociraptor. And if I'm being honest, sure, I do have my issues with each of these figures, except for the Baryonyx, which is weirdly perfect. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, I am more than willing to overlook them, because the Hammond Collection so far is already head and shoulders above what we got out of the Amber Collection. It is so much more diverse in its first few months of existence than the Amber Collection ever was going to be. This is a beautiful sight, warts and all, and I am so excited for what is coming next. Next up for size comparisons, I'm going to go ahead and bring in some other Mattel Rex figures. I'm going to start with the Thrash and Throw Tyrannosaurus Rex, which was really the first step down this path to the Hammond collection. And I loved that figure when it first came out. It set a high bar for me, but honestly, Hammond Collection Rex absolutely obliterates it. Next up, here it is alongside the epic Roarin' Tyrannosaurus Rex, which for a lot of people was the high water mark when it came to Mattel showing off their sculptural detail skills with a Rex figure. Honestly, that figure was a bit of a mixed bag for me, but I could definitely see why people thought it was as well sculpted as it was. But just seeing these two side by side, yeah, I think it's safe to say Mattel has yet again outdone themselves. This is bar none the best Rex they have ever done. 
And there's the Rex with the other big bads of the franchise currently available from Mattel. And I gotta be honest right now, I'm calling it. If they do the Hammond collection for these two and more, I think I'm honestly gonna part with all the mainline stuff. This would be an incredible lineup. Then, of course, you have to do it. You basically have to do this. Here it is with the Ford Explorer and little Timmy. And oh my gosh, the amount of joy that this brings me. <laughs> I don't, I don't have word. Just, just enjoy it. I'll shut up. And then, just for the heck of it, here it is alongside the Nanmu Tyrannosaurus Rex. Then, of course, I hate to do it because it's just shaming at this point. I gotta bring in a Triceratops next to this Rex. So here it is with one of Mattel's always too small trike figures. You want to see this thing alongside a real 118th Triceratops? There you go, it's the beasts of the Mesozoic Triceratops adult. These two are so cool, for different reasons of course, and obviously comparing Mattel's $50 action figure to the $140 Triceratops from Creative Beast Studios might be a bit unfair, but it's nice to finally have a proper sized trike next to a proper sized Rex. And then, of course, the nostalgic comparison. Here it is alongside the original Kenner Red Rex. And what a path we have walked since 1993 in regards to toys. Of course, the Kenner Red Rex has a unique charm that will never be bested. But in terms of objectively capturing the likeness of the Jurassic Park style Tyrannosaurus Rex, honestly, guys, I think this is it. It was a near 30 year journey, but it was well worth the wait. And that was the Hammond Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex. And honestly, this figure is everything I hoped it would be. The detailing is top notch. The articulation is amazing. The proportions, a bit wonky, but that long tail really gives this thing an impressive appearance. And the paint job is great for a relatively cheap action figure. I don't know what more you could want, everyone. This is it. This is the Jurassic Park Rex from Mattel. Skip everything else and go get this one. But as always, I want to know what you guys think of this figure. Do you own it yet? Are you planning to pick it up? What has been your favorite Rex so far? And what do you want to see next from the Hammond Collection? Drop a comment down below leaving all of your thoughts. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's review. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, take care out there. And bye-bye.